Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Berean Baptist Church for this, our Wednesday night service. Um, our congregation can say that uh, we are happy to be in a cool sanctuary. That was very, very difficult to do last week, but it is uh, refreshing this week, and we're grateful. So, Jared, you didn't know this. You're actually promoted now up to row three. Since the seating is now open, the teen row is rows three, two, or one, or mom and dad. So, you are promoted now. And so, uh, one more, up one more, yep. We have, we have moved, now that everything's open, we have, uh, we have promoted the teenagers up closer to the front. And, and, and that way, you see, if I see her asleep and I can see it easier, I have vision problems, you know. So, anyway. Uh, glad you're doing better. Um, I, I heard about uh, the wonderful lake and the bright sun and what the sun does to, to skin at high altitudes. And so we're, yeah, we're praying for your recovery on that one. So glad to have you here. We're going to start by singing. Brother Carl's going to lead us in a song here. Turn to number 272, 272. And I'm on the winning side. Amen. Let's stand, please. Once I drifted out in sin, had no hope nor joy within, and my soul was burning down with pride. When my Savior came along, I'm on the winning side. Well, I am on the winning side. Yes, I'm on the winning side. Now to sin, no more will I abide. I've enlisted in the fight. For the cause <laughs> I'm on the winning Side. From the straight and narrow way, I was drifting every day out upon the waters deep and wide. But it all is over now, glory light is on my brow, and my soul is on the way. I'm on the winning side. Yes, I'm on the winning side. Now to sin, no more will I abide. I've enlisted in the fight for the cause of truth and right. Praise the Lord, I'm on the winning side. I will never have a fear. For my Lord is ever near, and in Him so often I confide. In Him remains upon myself, since I came to know control. Be on the winning side. Well, I am on the winning side. Out in sin, no more will I abide. I've enlisted in the fight for the cause of truth and right. Praise the Lord, I'm on the winning side. Amen. Thank you for your singing. And by the way, one week ago during the I Love America conference, thank you for your singing. If there's one thing that the pastors that came through uh, commented on, they said, this church can sing. And how important, no, we're supposed to praise the Lord anyway, so you might as well praise him loud and long. Um, I don't, I probably didn't coin the phrase, but I always say, you know, if it's worth doing, it's worth bursting a blood vessel doing it. And it's important to just let it go, give it all effort, how important it is. Uh, good to have each and every one of you here. We're going to have a word of prayer, 
ask God's blessing on the service right now. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you that we can be gathered in your house. We thank you, Lord, that we can sing your praises and know for sure that we are on the winning side. A wonderful truth that only comes from a person receiving Christ as their personal Savior Amen. through eternal salvation. What an important thing to know. And Lord, as uh, I was uh, reading with uh, another church member uh, going through a discipleship study, and I was thinking about, uh, uh, about uh, our Savior coming back on a great white horse. And we're coming back. We're part of the army. And uh, it's, it's so, like so many battles. Uh, we're not even going to need to fight the battle. We're going to watch Jesus do it right in front of us. And uh, how wonderful it is to be on the victory side of things. Please encourage our hearts through your word tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Number 191, 191, count your blessings, amen. <clears throat> when upon life's billows you are tempest-tossed, when you are discouraged thinking all is lost, count your many blessings, name them one by one, and it will surprise you what the Lord has done. Count your blessings, name them one by one, Count your blessings, see what God hath done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God hath done. Are you ever burdened with a load of care? Does the cross seem heavy you are called to bear? Count your many blessings, every doubt will fly. And you will be singing as the days go by. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God hath done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God hath done. When you look at others with their lands and gold, that Christ has since promised you is wealth untold. Count your many blessings money cannot buy. Your reward in heaven, not your home on high. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God has done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God has done. So amid the conflict, whether great or small, Count your many blessings, angels will attend. Help and comfort give you to your journey's end. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God has done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God hath done. Amen. Wonderful singing. Let me start with the new bulletin of the month. Some of you maybe did not get this. Color is this bright red color. If you did not get the bulletin of the month, raise your hand, and Mick will make sure you get one. Uh, Mick, Mrs. Mick wants um, a bulletin. And uh, anybody else, you did not get your bulletin of the month yet, just looking here. We're doing good here. Now, let me ask those of you who attended the I Love America conference, did those, for those of you who attended the I Love America conference, did you get your mug? And if you didn't get your mug, raise your hand because we want to make sure you got it if you attended and did not get it. Um, and it looks like we are okay on that. Okay, just uh, double checking. 
Um, of course, so we have spare ones, which means I have a lot of future visitors that we can mug, and that's wonderful. And uh, so we're looking forward to that. And I hope you had a wonderful uh, 4th of July. Uh, my wife and I, uh, we, we headed to Boardman for a fireworks display. And evidently, the city of Boardman, they saved all the fireworks money that they didn't use last year and added it to the fireworks money that they had this year. And that, they had a whopper of a fireworks display over the Columbia River there. It is very good. My ears are still ringing. Uh, but uh, anyway, it was really a good and wonderful time and uh, just so much enjoy that. And uh, nothing, nothing really caught on fire that I could tell. And uh, we had a fabulous time with that. I hope you did as well. And uh, just talking, uh, let me talk about this weekend. We will have a, a men's, uh, let me make sure I have this right here. I have a men's prayer at 8.30, ladies prayer at 9 o'clock this coming Saturday. And then outreach at 10 o'clock again. Um, Saturday, they're going back and forth. It may be a hot day again. I won't have you out a real long time. Uh, but how important it is that we reach out uh, for our home and our community, that we continue doing that. Men, we will have a men's breakfast a week after that. I want you to be ready for that. And uh, just to mind the calendar, just look at different things uh, that are taking place. Again, if you're interested in attending Faith Bible Institute, late registration is still open. And if you have an interest in enrolling uh, if you have an interest in enrolling children in, um, in the Homeschool Association, registration is open for that as well. And you can talk to me or you can talk to Mrs. Andreessen about that. So just letting you know about those things that are taking place. Does everybody here, you got a prayer request. You have a prayer request bulletin as well. Okay, we will get to that a little bit later. Go, Pastor, it still looks pretty patriotic in here. Well, I'm still in a patriotic mood. And uh, you may discover that when it comes to the, the flags there. I may, sometimes in July, I just leave them up. I just like uh, the colors. Um, you know, do you have a favorite color? Yes, red, white, and blue. And, um, and so uh, just letting you know that, go, Pastor, you're wearing your flag tie. Yeah, I'm still... I'm still feeling patriotic, which means I'm still going to preach uh, patriotic tonight about that. So, Brother Carl will have one more song here. Okay, number 283. It's joy unspeakable and full of glory. Let's stand, please. I have found His grace is all complete. He supplied it every need. While I sit and learn at Jesus' feet, I am free, yes, free indeed. It is joy unspeakable and full of glory, full of glory, full of glory. It is joy unspeakable and full of glory. Has never yet been told. I have found the pleasure I once craved. It is joy and peace within. What a wondrous blessing I am saved from the awful It is joy unspeakable and full of glory, full of glory. Full of glory, joy unspeakable and full of glory. Oh, the half has never yet been told. I have found that hope so bright and clear, living in the realm of grace. Oh, the Savior's presence is so near, I can see His smiling face. Joy unspeakable and full of glory, full of glory, full of glory. It is joy unspeakable and full of glory. Oh, the half has never yet been told. I have found the joy no tongue can tell. How its waves of glory roll. It is like a great overflow. Within my soul, it is joy unspeakable and full of glory, full of glory, full of glory. It is joy unspeakable and full of glory. Oh, the half has never yet been told. Amen. Amen. Uh, 
thank you, Brother Carl. Wonderful singing tonight. You know what? It's going to take us a while uh, to, to figure things out. Um, some of you, quite honestly, you have no idea what pew you were in before COVID. You have no earthly idea. And, you know, so now we've opened everything up. Um, I had to tell Sharon and Danelle where their original seating was because they didn't remember anymore. And some of you, now that it's opened up, you have raced for the front. Some of you, now that it's opened up, you've raced for the back. And, uh, you know, over on that side, those comfy red chairs were not even there before COVID. But I'll tell you what, to, to get me to remove that, they're going to make me go through a men's meeting and a church meeting. They're going to vote me down. I know how that's going to work. And, uh, and so it's going to take a while. Hopefully some of you will eventually come closer to the front so I don't have to remodel the sanctuary and push the pulpit out 20 feet into the aisles to get back to you. So anyway, but eventually uh, you'll figure it out and figure you can sit closer. And um, uh, is a evangelist Larry Brown, and he'll be coming in a couple years. He used to say this when it came to preaching. I want to be close to the spout where the glory comes out, is, is what he would say. And, um, you know, I can't sit in the back of a church. I can't do it. It is way too distracting. People are doing way too many weird things in a church sanctuary for me to sit in the back and watch them. It's weird enough watching them from the front. So, uh, anyway, uh, you'll eventually figure all that out. Ephesians chapter 5, and looking at verse 18. Ephesians 5, looking at verse 18, and what I'm going to speak on tonight has everything to do with America. Look right here. And be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but be filled with the spirit and you go why is that in there and it's very interesting if you think it carefully through what it's saying is don't be drunk with the spirits plural but be filled with the spirit understand that they talk about alcohol as being spirits and it's literally the idea the reason is is because alcohol and drunkenness opens up a person to another spirit or spirits and that is why they called it spirits. But it says, be not drunk with wine where is excess, but be filled with the spirit, which is the Holy Spirit of God. One brings a lack of control and incoherence. The other one brings Holy Spirit control and complete coherence. And then it continues on. And it says this, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let us have a word of prayer together. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray that you would help us through your word tonight. And Lord, we realize because we've read your word that the world is going to wax worse and worse. But it is not for us to determine that timetable. That is in your hands. And so help us to know that we have the right spirit to help our brothers and sisters in Christ and to help our nation. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. As you're seated, let me give you some observations here. Observation number one. Prosperity does not always produce thanksgiving. I want you to think that through for a moment here. Prosperity does not always produce thanksgiving. Now, some of you who have been parents have discovered that the hard way. You thought, if I give my child more, my child will be more thankful. That couldn't be farther from the truth. My observation of observing the parenting world, and by the way, parenting is a contest between whether the child will train the parent or the parent will train the child. 
That is parenting. It's a contest. And one of the things that I've observed is if you give children more, wait for it, wait for it, they will want more. And once they're used to more, they then will complain when it's not more. And you go, where did they learn to do that? Well, one, they didn't need to learn that. It's the sin nature. But two, they also learned it from adults. Because we live in the most prosperous nation on planet Earth. There was a recent interview over this weekend. And it said the youth of America struggle to say, I am proud to be an American. And the reason they struggle is because they have found so much to complain about. They, they find many, many things. They, they can complain about the economy. They can complain about who's in office. They can complain about critical race theory. They can complain about anything and everything because prosperity does not always produce thanksgiving. There's a simple reason for this, and that is there is no nation that complains more than the United States of America. And yet, I've noticed that nobody is trying to get out. They're all trying to get in. And so, the issue is thanksgiving. The issue is this concept of thanksgiving. I, uh, I sent out a general text, and I, I sent out different things, you know, during the holidays, you know, Happy Thanksgiving, I sent out Happy Thanksgiving, Merry Christmas, I sent out Merry Christmas, I sent out God Bless America to a bunch of people. A couple people came back with, how can he? And I'm thinking, oh really? And has he stopped blessing you today? And so, is it right for us not to thank God today because we think maybe he won't tomorrow? This is important, and I, and I, wanna, I want us to think about this. Because some people are drinking the red Kool-Aid of thanklessness and forgetting to realize that today we are still the most blessed nation on planet earth today but some people drink the red kool-aid of thanklessness and go well everything's so bad so someday in the future god won't bless us anymore so let's be thankless today that's not what the scripture says let's talk about thanking god for america and why we should be thanking god for america right now let me give you five things to think about here. Number one, God sent a Holy Ghost movement to America that caused the founding of our country. Not because of righteousness, but because of receptivity. And this is important to understand. The Great Awakening did not occur because people in the colonies were righteous. The Great Awakening occurred because the people in the colonies were receptive. The Bible says this in the book of Acts, chapter 2, verse 37, where Peter preached the very first sermon of the new church to the new crowd, were they receptive? The Bible says in Acts 2, verse 37, Now when they heard this, that is the preaching, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? They weren't righteous because they had just crucified Jesus on the cross, but they were receptive. And this is what happened prior to the founding of this great country is you had people who were receptive. You had people who attended a church service where Jonathan Edwards preached sinners in the hands of an angry God. By the way, he wasn't preaching in his own church when he preached the one where great revival cut loose. He had already preached that message in his own church, and it was a dud. 
because the people weren't receptive. But there were receptive people, and God knows how to get a preacher and receptive people together, and he did. And our nation was founded because not because people were righteous, it's because they were receptive. They were pricked by their own sin. And then, after they were pricked by their own sin, then they hungered for God. And they hungered for God's word. And the Bible says this, looking in the book of Nehemiah chapter 8, one of my favorite verses, um, uh, I think it's a verse, I think every preacher hopes Sunday morning will be like this. And all the people gathered themselves together as one man into the street gate that was before the water gate. And they spake unto Ezra the scribe to bring the book of the law of Moses which the Lord had commanded to Israel. Every preacher hopes he'll open the door and everybody will just flood in and say, we want to hear the word of God. But understand that back then that's exactly what happened. The church is filled up. The bars were closed because of lack of business. And the church is filled up. And you, we go, well, people aren't receptive today. Well, you don't know that. And I don't know that. I don't know the, receptative, the receptivity of the checker at the check stand at the Safeway store. I don't know whether they're receptive. I don't know whether they're not. When I go out on outreach and I knock on a door of a house, uh, um, just to the ushers, somebody's in, somebody's in the floor, okay? Um, I don't know one door to the next whether somebody is receptive or whether somebody is not. But if I become a thankless individual, then I just assume it's all over and everybody's unreceptive. That's not the case. And we don't know where they are, but God does. One of our church planning missionaries is having a vacation Bible school on Monday. They may discover there are a lot of receptive people. One of our church planning missionaries in Vancouver, Washington, had two people receive Christ on Sunday. And you go, yeah, but that's over there, man alive, out here in the boonies where the tumbleweeds are. People are hardened and unreceptive. Oh, really? Tell the pastor in North Powder, Oregon, who had somebody saved on Sunday morning. You see, we don't know these things, and we, we need to be thankful for what God is doing in the here and now and understand that God did something back then was a here and now. Some would say, well, America can't have another revival. Oh, really, and are you God? You don't know that. I don't know that. My question for you is this. Today, are you thankful for America today? Because I notice that I have money in my pocket for a Happy Meal. I notice that the lights are on. I notice the air conditioner is going. I notice the police aren't coming in to drag me out yet. And so I notice all these things. Are you thankful for America today? And are you going to let your pessimism for America tomorrow to prevent you from literally out of your lips thanking God for America today? We're blessed today. I think God deserves a little bit of thanks, don't you think? Yeah, I think that a thankless America will become a self-fulfilling prophecy where we all help it cave in. I don't think we should do that as God's people. Number one, God sent a Holy Ghost movement to America not because of righteousness, but because of receptivity. Number two, God raised up a God-aware, God raised up God-aware and God-fearing men to found and lead our nation. In Jeremiah chapter 5, looking at verse 5, an important scripture in here, and it says this, it says, I will get thee unto the great men and will speak unto them. For they have known the way of the Lord and the judgment of their God. Understand, our nation was founded by great and God-fearing men. 
And you may try to think that there's less great and God-fearing men, but let me tell you two things. Number one, the number is not zero. And number two, you cannot trust the media to tell you the heartbeat of America. Let me say that a second time. You cannot trust the media to tell you the heartbeat of America because you don't know. That's one of the reasons why I love having Pastor Brad Wells out here because Pastor Brad Wells can tell you of God-fearing, born-again people that are in Congress, but if you were left to let the media tell you, you would be convinced there wasn't a one. And... I want you to understand, in case you think, well, the media is propagandizing now, they have been propagandizing for decades. Do you have proof, Pastor? Oh, yeah, I do. I'm glad you asked. Okay, back in the 1980s, there was a study done regarding the LGBTQ movement. And, and during that time, they... They discovered, by, by polling stuff, they discovered a, that by percentage, how many in our country actually identified with that movement in the 1980s. While at the exact same time, California had enacted their, it was either a Take 5 or Take 10 program. And the Take 5 or Take 10 program was that five out of every 100 students is, was actually homosexual or lesbian. And they were teaching the children in the California public school system that Take 5 program. Now, I want you to understand that. They were telling them that at least five are. The national poll at that time showed the actual figure was one half of 1%. So what was the truth? The truth was the media wasn't reporting the truth. And the truth was California wasn't teaching the truth. It was called recruitment and propaganda. Would it surprise you if I told you the devil wants you to think that it's too late for America? The devil desperately wants you to think it's too late for America. And there is an educational process going on where we are just supposed to sit on our sofas and wait for the world to end. Well, it's important to understand God raised up God-aware and God-fearing men to found and to lead our nation. And yes, maybe there's less of them, but the number is not zero. And I guarantee you, there are more of them than you think there are. And this is important to understand what God is able to do. And you know, why were they raised up in the first place? The same reason they're raised up in the book of Judges, looking at chapter 2 and looking at verse 18. It says, And when the Lord raised them up, Judges, then the Lord was with the judge, and delivered them out of the hand of their enemies all the days of the judge. Listen to this phrase. For it repented the Lord because of the, their groanings by reason of them that oppressed them and vexed them. Do you think the prayers of God's people might make a difference? They will. But I've discovered that people who have already waved the right f white flag, they stop praying. It's not time to stop praying. It is time to continue thanking. Because I've noticed that today, on this day, July 7th, year 2021, God has richly blessed the United States of America. It's important to understand. Important to keep things in perspective. Third thing. God raised up preachers to tell America the gospel truth. The Bible says this in Romans chapter 10, looking at verse 13. It says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? 
And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. It's important to understand, I didn't say the whole point. The whole point is this. God raised up preachers to tell America the gospel truth. He still is. Have you noticed that when it comes to the church planters we support, amazing thing, they're planting new churches. So guess what? God is still raising them up. And you know, and I'm still hearing about different people. I'm still hearing about people that are praying whether they'd be called to the Pacific Northwest to start new churches. Praise God for that. Um, you may not know this because um, that man didn't come. There is a man in a church in Salem, Oregon, who feels that God is calling him to plant a brand new church in Portland, Oregon. How many think Portland could use a good church? I think so. Yes. So God is still in the business. You know what? If God had given up, there wouldn't be any more of those new ones going. But I've noticed the pulpits aren't silent right now. Fourth point, and I want us to think about this. While we're turning there, go with me to Psalm 127. I want to point out something here. Psalm 127. Psalm 127, and I want you to notice this. Now, the first half, we talk about a lot, but we don't talk about the second half of the verse enough. Except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that build it. Here's the second half. Except the Lord keep the city, the watchman waketh but in vain. In a comparative sense. Let's stop here. Think about this. In a comparative sense, God is still blessing and protecting our country in a great way. The president of Haiti was killed today. He was assassinated. That didn't happen here. That happened in another country. Because that country, comparatively, is not protected in as great a way as the United States of America. And yes, we've had our bad times, but you realize something? Some of the darkest days in the United States of America is still better than the best days of 80% of the nations in the world. Well, Pastor, what happened? We got more. And after getting more, we wanted more. And sometimes when we don't get more, we complain that we don't get more. But compared to every other nation on planet Earth, the United States of America still has the best economy in the world, and it is still the most blessed nation in the world. And we may go, well, it's not as good as it was three years ago. It is still better than everyone else. So did you thank God today for America today? Because I notice God does amazing things when God's people will actually thank him. You see, now, and let me tell you something. There's a difference between chastisement and destruction. And there have been times God has chastised the United States of America. And I'm, I'm fine with saying God may indeed do that again. And with the drought we're experiencing and everything, he may be doing it again even right now. But there's a difference between chastisement and destruction. Destruction is a whole different ball of wax. Destruction happens when Yellowstone, the supervolcano, decides to burp. That will be complete and utter destruction. Can God do that? Yes. And any smart thinking person would realize that God, all God has to do is lift his hand to restraint on Yellowstone National Park and all of a sudden uh, we become 
Yellowstone National Wasteland. So God could, in an instant, destroy the country. But God has not done that. God has chosen during periods of times where people get their eyes off God, when sometimes God's people get their eyes off God, and he's chosen to chastise during those times. There's a difference between chastisement and destruction. And here's the thing. We get frustrated. Okay, let's be honest here. This is the honest class. This is the truth-telling class. How many of you sometimes get frustrated with your country? Wow, look at that. I think we're nearly universal here. And sometimes when people get frustrated with their country, just like you get frustrated with people, you know, that's why I always say it's good that God never has a bad day because if God even had one bad day, there'd be little tufts of ashes where all of you were sitting. And that's why it's good that I'm not God because I do have bad days. But this is important to understand. Romans chapter 12, verse 19 says this. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves. Let that sink in for a moment. Avenge not yourselves. And sometimes when somebody in charge does something colossally stupid or colossally wicked, we sometimes have this temptation. We really would like to avenge that. But it says, rather give place unto wrath, for is it written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. And that's a good thing to think about when it comes to the United States of America. That is a good thing to think about when it comes to your relatives, your in-laws and outlaws. That's a good thing to think about when it comes to your family members. That's a good thing to think about when it comes to fellow believers. Vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. Here's the wonderful thing about God. God is wonderfully and thoroughly just. But he has his place and his time, and that is very, very important. So, final point is this. As long as there are God's preachers, and as long as there are God's people, there is hope for America. So today, keep thanking God for America. And if tomorrow, if the sun rises and you have lights and you have air conditioning and your debit card works and there's groceries in the store, keep thinking, thanking God for America. No, God will make the decision on when America is through. Let's not help him along on that. Let us have a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, pray that you would help us. And Lord, a plea, even in my own heart, Lord, is to be grateful and to be thankful and not uh, to get my eyes on all the problems and see only the problems. Because you are a good God and you are doing amazingly good things for us. And there are many reasons we could think of where maybe you might not want to bless this nation. But right now you still are. Help us to be thankful and help us to be mindful and help us to encourage one another in the ways that we should. In Jesus' name, amen. And we're going to sing the song is number 328. This is a song of thanksgiving. I thank God for America, but I thank God for something far more than America, and that is amen. for saving my soul. Amen. 328, let's stand, stand as please. we sing. Some thank the Lord for friends and long, for mercy sure and sweet. But I would praise Him for His grace. In prayer I would repeat. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Thank you.
redemption so rich and free. Some thank him for the flowers that grow, some for the stars that shine. My heart is filled with joy and praise because I know he's mine. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. salvation so rich and free I trust in him from day to day I prove his saving grace I'll sing this song of praise to him until I see his face Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Thank you, Lord, for making me whole. Thank you, Lord, for giving to me thy great salvation, so rich and 